Hello, my name is Jamie Marie Stewart. I'm an LSR postdoctoral fellow at Caltech. And today I'll be speaking about how we can use RNA to build structures with nanoscale features and biologically relevant functions. So shown here on this slide is my most current work. These are droplets or condensates made of RNA capable of binding and organizing molecules, which I'll speak more about in this talk. In addition to my ultimate goal of working towards creating programmable RNA materials. If you're familiar with DNA, then you have knowledge it's a nucleic acid chemistry. Ribonucleic acid or RNA is a nucleic acid that is chemically and as a result structurally different from DNA. RNA is a complex mo molecule, but I'll speak on some of its distinct, distinctive features. So RNA is typically single-stranded in nature, however, it can also form a double-stranded helix. There's an active hydroxyl group located on the two prime carbon, as well as the use of a uracil as a nitrogenous base instead of thymine. RNA can par participate in canonical base pairing as well as non-canonical base pairing, such as GU wobble base pairs and the formation of G quartets through Hoogstein base pairing. So for the remainder of this talk for simplicity, I'll also present RNA in a more abstract 2D manner. So a double-stranded helix will be presented as a ladder where the rungs of the ladder represent base pairs and the side rails represent the backbone. Single-stranded RNA that has no base pairing will be presented as one half of that ladder. And further, single-stranded RNA can also form intra-strand base pairing, resulting in structures such as this hairpin with paired bases in the stem and unpaired bases in the loop. And lastly, to signify chemical directionality, the blunt ends refer to the five prime end and the triangles refer to the three prime end. Due to chemical and structural features, RNA is a functionally rich and diverse biomolecule responsible for regulating several cellular processes. Beyond acting as a means of genetic information, it can also regulate gene expression, such as the use of dicer substrate RNA for the intracellular release of siRNA for RNA interference. It also serves a structural, a structural function as a scaffold in the ribosome for the translation of proteins. And RNA can also form stable tertiary structures called aptamers that bind to molecules with high affinity and specificity. And due to the spectral properties of the bases, it can even be designed to emit fluorescence upon target binding. This unique toolbox of diverse RNA molecules presents us with new ways of understanding and interfacing with biology. Using computational models, we can design artificial RNA sequences for gene regulation, to build structures, and for sensing specific molecules, allowing us to create RNA materials that will be useful for diagnostic and therapeutic applications. DNA nanotechnology has extensively shown how DNA can be manipulated to build structures. However, for biologically relevant applications, it's much more natural to build things with RNA. Cells are constantly producing and degrading RNA to carry out necessary functions, truly illustrating how RNA can be thought of as the native language of the cell. So for my graduate work with Elisa Franco, we asked the question, can we build scalable RNA structures and deliver them into cells? With inspiration from DNA nanotechnology, I designed an RNA double crossover tile motif. So this tile consists of five single strands of RNA that canonically base pair to form these two double helical domains. There are two crossover points in which strands cross over from one domain into the other. And at the end of this, of this tile are single stranded overhangs or sticky ends that allow individual tiles to interact and form a higher order assembly. Through tuning the architecture and sequence content of this tile, this results in different assemblies such as flat lattices or tubular structures as characterized by atomic force microscopy and fluorescence microscopy. So in addition to demonstrating the nanoscale programmability using RNA, I also incorporated dicer substrate RNAs for gene silencing. These functionalized constructs can undergo cellular uptake, exhibit little to no off-target cell toxicity, and show improved stability in human blood serum in comparison to a single dicer substrate RNA. Lastly, we successfully targeted and silenced GFP expression in cells, as well as demonstrated the therapeutic potential by inducing cell death in prostate cancer cells by successfully targeting and silencing a cancer-related gene, PLK1. So to summarize, my graduate work has demonstrated the capability to build scalable RNA structures and deliver them to cells. However, these structures are static and lack dynamics. So creating dynamic materials would allow us new ways of interacting with biology. 
So for my postdoctoral work with Paul Rudiman, we asked the question, can we program dynamic RNA compartments that can organize molecules? In which understanding these principles will allow us to build a platform to detect molecules for sensor and diagnostic applications. Observing biology, we see that cells spatially and temporally organize molecules using dynamic membraneless liquid organelles. Some examples of these are the nucleolus located inside of the nucleus, in which there's a set of nested condensates responsible for ribosome biogenesis, as well as P bodies located in the cytoplasm responsible for mRNA metabolism. These liquid droplets are formed by the phase separation of nucleic acids and proteins, and the fluidity of these compartments is tuned by interaction strength, which is governed by bonding, valence, and flexibility. Nucleic acids also possess the ability to phase separate on their own in the absence of proteins. In this demonstration, this shows the formation of RNA condensates using a single stranded RNA consisting of nucleotide repeats associated with neurodegenerative disorders. This example shows the programmability of RNA, as well as the capability of incorporating biological functionality, or if you're a biologist, you may argue that this is incorporating biological dysfunctionality. And further, the synthesis of RNA is fairly simple. However, due to the use of a single stranded RNA with repeat sequences, this example lacks rational design and modularity. Therefore, the challenge is the rational design and synthesis of modular RNA condensates with biological functionality. To create an artificial RNA condensate system with inspiration from previous DNA motifs, I designed a motif monomer that consists of four RNA strands that hybridize to form four double-stranded domains separated by two unpaired bases at the core and one unpaired base between the double-stranded domain and the sticky ends to allow for flexibility. These sticky ends are self-complementary, allowing for individual motifs to interact and form a higher order assembly. The interaction strength between motifs is tuned by temperature, ionic conditions, and sticky end sequence, in which we can observe either a dispersed liquid-like droplet or a static gel phase, as characterized by fluorescence microscopy. Lastly, I designed motifs with previously characterized fluorogenic aptamers that fluoresce when bound to a fluorogen. Macroscopically, we can observe tubes with individual condensates under UV fluorescing at different wavelengths. Further, I created a multi-condensate system with orthogonally sequenced motifs where individual motifs are programmed to be self-complementary and only interact with themselves. So using a one-pot process, we can add these 12 strands, which make up these three motifs, as well as a fluorogen, and under proper conditions, the system self-segregates into three distinct compartments, noted by the red, orange, and yellow condensates. So again, these three compartments are sequence specific and do not fuse demonstrating how we can build distinct dynamic RNA compartments for organizing molecules. At the beginning of this talk, I mentioned how we can use computational models to build artificial RNA sequences to carry out functions such as gene regulation, for building structures, and for sensing specific molecules. We can also interface these modules to build structures with gene regulation and sensing capabilities. So for my future work, I will build a new class of programmable RNA materials, rapid RNA degradation and limited design tools for multi-stranded RNA secondary structure prediction are challenges that must be addressed in order to build RNA materials that would be useful for diagnostics and therapeutic treatments. I will incorporate nuclease resistant chemical modifications in RNA to build robust assemblies and use experimental methods to obtain thermodynamic parameters to improve RNA structure prediction methods. Better understanding these design principles will allow me to build stimuli responsive RNA materials that would be useful for sensors and diagnostics. In addition to building RNA materials with functional RNAs such as microRNAs to control cell differentiation and direct cell fate, which would be useful for cell therapies and regenerative medicine. To conclude, I envision my work presenting insight into RNA self-assembly and advancing research strategies for novel biomaterials for disease detection and therapeutic medicine. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me via my email or Twitter located at the bottom of this slide. Thank you.